Welcome to the Fermented Homestead. If you're new here, my name is Anna, and on this channel, I'm sharing our journey of learning how to turn our home into a homestead. Today, we're on a mission, and that mission was kind of established in the last garden tour video that I did when I showed you guys all of the slug damage that I've had on a lot of my plants. Right after I shot that video, I ended up planting a bunch, planting a bunch of different starts, and I filled in all of the different gaps of all the places that had been eaten by slugs, bugs, or bunnies, or whatever it was that ate them. And then I, one of the ones that I planted was an Arminian yard long cucumber. And that's it right there. So I have decided to declare war on the slugs in my yard. <laughs> Several of the people that had watched that video were kind enough to give their suggestions on different ways that they get rid of slugs. Uh, Lori had suggested that I take just out go out in the middle of the night or not in the middle of the night but like at, at dusk and with a skewer and just basically make shish kebabs out of slugs and throw them out and so that is going to be my plan here in a couple of hours and then james gave me the suggestion of using copper tape and putting the copper tape along the raised beds which i have heard that suggestion in the past the slugs just don't like it and then he also suggested taking a really hoppy beer, putting it in bowls and like two, one or two inches thick and or deep and just putting it all around inside the beds once I do the actual copper tape. So I don't have copper tape, but, or really easy access to it. I need, I'm gonna order some online, but in the meantime, I got some beer. And so we're gonna make traps with the beers, with the beer for the slugs. And hopefully that we will have a nice collection of those in the morning, which I'll bring you back and show you that tomorrow. So for now, the plan is just to hunt slugs and lay out some traps. And then we're gonna just plant a bunch of the starts that we did not get to yesterday. So I'll bring you along and show you what we're doing tonight. We have probably about an hour or so until it's time to really kind of start heading inside or at least start heading over to start our slug harvest. And so I want to go ahead and start the process of planting some transplants in here. It's gonna be a long process. This is a huge area, but my plan is to kind of go along the edge right here and just kind of plant. And we have this huge, huge, it's like a it's a rhododendron bush over here and pretty as it may be i don't care about it so i'm gonna my plan is to put up <laughs> chickens are going kind of crazy <laughs> So anyways, my plan is kind of my plan. We'll see how it goes. It may, it's subject to change as always. But my plan is to kind of put up some kind of a trellising here. Probably cattle panel, but I'm leaving it open to other options. It might be something else. And so I'm planning just all along. It's got a, like the, a board that goes along the base here all the way down. Like literally all the way down. And so I'm going to plant close to that so that... Um, I can climb up the trellis and I'm gonna put a trellis there at some point in the near future. But for now, I'm just gonna get these suckers in the ground. Because ultimately, I don't want this to be a permanent thing, but ultimately my plan is this whole area here. I'm gonna kind of clear it out and clean it out when I have the time for it. I'll probably leave some semblance of this thing here. But ultimately, uh, this whole area, I want to make like an herb garden. And so that's kind of my hope. I don't see how it goes, but for now, it's planting time. Now that I have the kind of the, the perimeter, the whole, uh, edge there kind of weeded for the most part i mean it's not perfect by any means but it's good enough to be able to plant in so now we're gonna see how easy it is to plant through this we have it's it's like kind of like a roost style i'm sure it's not official it's just i laid down cardboard many many layers of cardboard back let me see it's it's the end of july almost august and i planted this at the beginning of november so it's been a quite a long time what's that like nine months or something like that 
and it's just been sitting here chilling. So now we're gonna see what this broken down soil after this amount of time kind of looks like in plants like. I'll let you know. So we got the whole row here planted. I got, I think I planted them roughly about every foot and a half to two feet. I didn't count, I just kind of moved. <laughs> and I don't, I should have counted how many of them I actually have, but I didn't. So uh, I wanted to show you guys one thing. This whole area here is like the cardboard did everything that it was supposed to do. This whole system did everything it was supposed to do. Uh, beyond just the very edges there where I had to weed, there doesn't seem to be anything really under there. It's pretty much just like worms and, I mean, and slugs. So <laughs> that's unfortunate. I hope I didn't, we'll find out, I guess, throughout the, se throughout the rest of the season if this is a good way to go when you have a lot of slugs but we'll find out. I had no idea that there would be, I think I found like four or five slugs just kind of buried inside of it. Like I, th I thought the hay and the sharp edges on the hay would kind of deter them, but it doesn't seem to be. They're nestled quite, quite well underneath all this straw. But anyways, one thing that I wanted to show you guys, because this ground here is very rocky. It seems like almost like all of this gravel that we have up here, it's kind of like that type of gravel. It's just like in the ground. I don't know if the, if the previous owners had like dumped excess gravel there or what happened with it. If it's just natural, I have no idea, but it is what it is. And so one tool that really helped me is this fake hori hori. I really want to someday get a hori hori, but I don't have a real one. This is just the Fiskars brand of them. And it's super duper handy. Like it was just, I don't know what I would have done. Like I couldn't have probably would not have been able to do that with the shovel that I have. And this is just really specifically designed for that kind of thing. So if you don't have a hori hori, totally get one because this thing is amazing. And this is just a fake one. It was much cheaper than the wooden handled versions that they sell in a lot of other places, but I still think that someday I want to get a real Hori Hori, but for now, this one is pretty stinking awesome. <laughs> I just went and poured out the entire six pack, basically, of beer into these traps and forgot to hit record. <laughs> Crap. So, basically, I don't drink, I don't drink pretty much at all. I drink every once in a while around people, but it's pretty darn rare. And so I didn't really know what kind to get. I just went to the corner store and I picked out the kind of beer that had a picture of a hop on there because uh, he had suggested a very hoppy beer and that would hopefully attract all of the slugs. So I have poured out five beers into eight different containers. It's gonna get expensive if I have to do this again. Uh, but I guess I'm just gonna have to go to Costco. So we're gonna go and we're gonna try, attempt to strategically place these in places where slugs tend to be prominent or also most likely uh, right next to all of the starts that I just planted. I don't think that you guys can see me pretty much at all, but now we are ready to actually go out and do some hunting. So I'll go ahead and bring you guys along and show you at least what I can show you, which probably is not going to be much, but we're going to hunt some slugs. I'll show you what I end up with. Ah. Ew. Oh, that thing just flared right up. Ah. If only I could do that to aphids. Shish kebab's getting pretty big. So this is getting to be really difficult to do with uh, holding one hand with the camera. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna finish making my snail and slug kebab and then I'll show you tomorrow how much I actually got. It's the next morning here and I have just been out here kind of checking and seeing how, how the slug population is doing out here. And I wanted to show you over here 
in the row that we planted, I covered it up with like some kind of like a, a frost fabric. Really, it's like a, a grass germination kind of thing. I've had this thing for years and it was just in the roll. I never used it and I was like, oh, okay, I'll go and bust out and use it. This one did fairly well. I, it's not something I'm gonna leave on there long term because the water is not penetrating really much at all. I'm really surprised, it's just kind of floating on top there. Uh, but I, I went through and checked each one and I think we had three that have been eaten by slugs. So, I mean, all things considered with my luck, that's not too shabby. And to show you kind of, we have some drowning slugs. That's the best one that I've seen. The, uh, the two that are up there, those ones have almost nothing in there. There's like a one little one in one of them. And that's pretty much it. But I think over I think overall we've had pretty good luck with the transplants in here. See this one's doing good. We got one there. <sighs> These slugs, I swear. Oh, I didn't even tell you. I ended up catching 146 slugs. Like we just have a barrel of slugs in here. Like when I say that we have slugs, like I'm not playing, I'm not joking. Like we got slugs. So it looks like I'm gonna have to do another round of it. This one has made it. This one's the one that always gets eaten the first night in this spot. So I went ahead and surrounded it with some wood chips because I noticed that we don't have a huge amount of slugs in the wood chips. So I was like, maybe I'll just give it an extra boost. So now we're gonna go look over here, see if we got any slugs in this trap. None. And that's the transplant's doing good, and that one's doing all right. I don't think we had one over here. Okay. So that transplant got eaten. There was one right there. <sighs> Minnesota midget cantaloupe is done. And over here, that transplant's doing good. We have a couple of these peas that got eaten in the rows here. Yeah, this one's doing good. This one's surviving. And I think that's just about it for the transplants uh, from last night, anyways. All things considered, definitely much better luck. We still had some that got eaten. I mean, I don't think we're gonna be able to avoid that. And the, the grass is like the main place where these guys are. That's where they're hiding through the day. And then they just come out at night. So I need to, we need to get, we just need to get better at mowing the lawn in the garden area <laughs> or trimming it, whatever you want to call it. But I just, I'd, I'd rather trellis up tomatoes. I don't like mowing. So we had one trap that was overall pretty successful. Ooh, hey, this one's pretty successful. We've got a fly. <laughs> okay, so maybe like once I do, I, following following his advice completely, once I do get the copper tape to go along the, the top kind of edges of the, the beds and then putting the beer traps inside of the beds to catch any that might have, might be on the other side of the copper tape. Because I have heard that often that the bugs just, or that the slugs just don't like to cross across, across the copper tape, or they don't like to cross copper, something about it, I don't know what it is. I'm guessing maybe it's some kind of a chemical thing with their slime, who knows what it is, but it is. And I've heard of it a lot. So I'm gonna try it once I do get the copper tape, we're gonna try it the way that he suggests with just putting it on the inside. I'm not gonna waste any more money on any more beer money. And then also with, we transplanted, I think it was, we replaced 14, 14, 14 13 or 14 different transplants in this in-ground garden. We trans, we trans, we, blah. We replaced 10 on, or nine on the far end and then I think four in the actual garden or in the rest of it. So, I mean, there's a huge difference in the number of transplants that had been, had died off over on the far end. So there's one, there's one, still doing great. All of these squashes are so far are just doing phenomenal. There's a good one. And there's one right there.
But this one I left in hopes that maybe if I watered it and fertilized it enough that maybe it'll do something. It's a canary yellow melon. I'm gonna give it maybe one more week and then I'm gonna pull it. I mean, really other than that, it looks like all, all the other transplants made it through. And this is day two or night number two. Every single one has survived the night down here. I'm so excited about that. I was really nervous that that wouldn't happen. <laughs> I was out here, I'm not even joking, I counted 146, I think it was 146. Might have been 149. Anyways, 140 something slugs. And I just kept going. I filled up that stick like five or six times and just got all the way to the end and then brought it and put it in the bucket of water to drown them. And um, yeah, so I mean, that was an interesting night. It took me probably about an hour and a half, maybe two hours. I was just out here with my headlamp and watching YouTube videos and just uh, having myself a good old time stabbing slugs. They're so gross. I don't like touching them. And the slime always remains on everything. We're not in a place where you really have to worry about the the toxic nature of the slugs. My sisters live in Hawaii. They really have to worry about slugs. They have to worry about the slime. Something called, I think it's rat lung disease, is very prominent in slug slime. And so if you have slugs, you have to be very diligent, very careful, and you have to wash all your produce that has, you just have to wash all your produce because it's really, it's a really bad disease to get. So I just wanted to show you everything that we were all the slug hunting seems to be the most viable option. And we're gonna find out over the next couple of days uh, if it has really diminished the population of the slugs or if they're just gonna come out from, from the forest, come out in droves. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and keep you guys posted on anything further that I do with slugs. I think just about everybody deals with slugs to some degree. And so I'll just kind of show you the things that work for me, the things that don't work for me, and what are all the things I'm doing in the long run to try and alleviate my slug issue. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, if you got any ideas, or if you just enjoyed it, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, and we'll see you next time. Bye.